The Fast of Daniel From 11th to 31st December Concluding in the New Year's Eve Night Vigil Hello to all, a very good morning to all of you. We are here for one more day to meditate on the fast of Daniel. The 10th day, we are getting to the half of the fasting. And what have you been doing differently so far? This is not just the fast of Daniel, but it's the month of the difference. And for you who did the fast of Daniel before, do something different than what you did in the other fast, especially if you don't have received the Holy Spirit after doing one, two, or maybe many times the fast of Daniel. We are in the month of the difference, so do different. And for you who never did it, you want to learn more about the fast of Daniel. Today, the 10th day, you can go on our website and read more about it. It is uckg.fe, uckg.fe. There is there a text explaining more. And you can watch also our meditations with testimonies that will guide you. Even though if you didn't do it until this day, you can start it. It is not late yet, so you can do it. And we are on the journey until the night vigil where we're going to be here in church, here in Helsinki and many universal church all over the world, finishing the, this year, 2021, in the presence of God and is starting a new year in His presence. And today's meditation, I want to read with you what I was talking to people on Sunday, this last Sunday in church. It is in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 10, Mark and from verse 42, oh, pardon me, 46, from verse 46, but I'm going to read just verse 51. Jesus was talking with this man, Bartimaeus, a blind man, and he cried out to Jesus. He was decided that he wanted to know Jesus to, to have his healing. And look what interest question Jesus makes to him. On verse 51, Mark 10, 51. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? You know, I've been always meditating on this question. Is this not so obviously that a blind man wants to see? Like the, the one whose, whose problem is visible. It was literally on his face, the issue he had. But Jesus yet asked, what do you want me to do for you? And you know, he's been asking that for you, waiting you to say what you need, not what you want. How many times you have asked God for what you want, and you are wondering, when I'm going to get that? When I'm going to receive that? Well, let me, let, let me inform you that Jesus is not going to give you all your wishes if not fall to his wishes, to his will. And what is God's will after all? Well, it is to give you what you need for the purpose he has for you, what you need. And especially when we are talking about the Holy Spirit, do you want the Holy Spirit just because you want or you understand that you need? Many people don't see the need but they want because the pastor has it, because the assistant has it, because the lady on the testimony, she has it. So I need it because they have it, not because I need it, because it's a necessity. Why do you need to breathe? Oh, it's obvious because otherwise I'm going to die. Yeah, exactly. You don't breathe because others, they breathe. You don't eat because others, they eat. So you're not just going to have the Holy Spirit because others they have. You will receive the Holy Spirit when you understand that you need. And you ask what you need. What do you want me to do for you? Oh, I want your Holy Spirit. Okay, what's the purpose? What do you want it for? For your own benefit, a selfish way to want it just for your ego? It's not going to work. You need to want the Holy Spirit to have him inside of you to be able to do his will to serve him better to serve him to belong to him to be his property 
Understand? He's not just going to be your property. You're going to be his property. Let us watch now the testimony of uh, Diane. Diane, yes, Diane, she, she has her experience with the fast of then, and she's going to share with you in this testimony. And I'm going to go back, come back, making the prayer for you who desire to receive the Holy Spirit. When I was growing up, I was, was the baby, baby girl. I was quite spoiled. I was the black sheep of the family. Um, I was a cheeky child. Um, at the age of 11, my dad left and it gave me an opportunity to spread my wings, basically, to see what was in the world. I started to party at the age of 13, um, started drinking at the age of 13, started to take drugs a, a little later on, um, between 14 and 15. My first abusive relationship started um, at the age of 18, was with a gentleman who was really abusive to me, um, used to hit me all the time. And I, for me, it was, a, it was normal because of the life that I had led, basically. So if I got hit, it was normal to me. But this was the start of my downfall. I could see a pattern in the relationships. Um, if they wasn't abusive, then um, I was being cheated on um, and it was really affecting me. Not only did I um, experience failed relationships, I experienced a health issue, a serious health problem that just had a needle in pain in my back at one stage. And from then, like, it was like my whole body just collapsed, basically. I was on two crutches, um, I couldn't walk. I just, I was just completely ill. Um, on top of that illness, I was anorexic. I would cook, I would eat, but I would just, eat like three or four spoons of the meal and then I just wouldn't want it. And because it was a disprotrusion in my back and I was vomiting, I couldn't actually take any medication. With all these problems, I was still addicted. I can remember my sister had to be um, supplying my financial side of things because I wasn't working. And one day she said, I can't give you any money anymore because you're just going to buy drugs with it. And that's when I kind of realized, you know, things are serious here. I felt like I was in a dark hole um, I can remember one day saying to my sister, there has to be more to life than this. I, it was like I needed the change. I knew that things wasn't normal. So everything was just failing for me. So my sister invited me to a Friday service. Um, she came and picked me up when I entered the church. My whole body felt 100 times worse. I felt sick. I felt like I wanted to pass out. And I said to her, I can't stay, I need to go. I left, I just, I just had to leave. I knew something had happened to me when I left the church because about a couple of weeks later, I decided to tell my sister to let the pastor come around to pray for me. Um, and he came, he came with an assistant and they prayed for me and I manifested. I was elevating myself off the floor It was something that I had never experienced before. After the prayer, the pastor invited me to do a chain of prayer on Sundays, Wednesdays and Fridays um, to fight for my deliverance, to be totally free, which I needed tools to do this. And I decided that I needed this for myself, so I said yes. Although I was in the church, I didn't want to give up the world. I was coming to the church, but I was still doing things that I shouldn't be doing. I was still tripping up. I was still making mistakes. Um, I still wasn't letting go of certain things. My own choice, but I, it's like I wanted to, but I just couldn't. One day I heard an assistant talking to somebody and they said, how long will you falter between two gods? As I was walking past, I heard him say that to the person, but it was like he was speaking to me and it was like the penny really dropped. So I realized that more than anything that I needed the Holy Spirit. Uh, my whole focus went to receiving the Holy Spirit. I had to first of all forgive myself. That was one of my main issues. During this time, I would also go to the park and pray at 5 a.m. before I would go to work. I used to do 12 hour shifts, so, you know, getting up early in the morning like that, I wanted to show God that I wanted Him. I remember being in the park and just one day I just felt 
that assurance, it was just like, wow, you know, God had said, you're mine. So I had that assurance, um, I had that peace. No one can explain the peace if you haven't got that peace. I felt so high, but it was a different high. It wasn't what anybody, no man, no drug, no person, no alcohol could give to me. It was, it was unbelievable, really. My mindset's really changed about me. Um, I love me. I no longer have those problems that I had in the past. I'm free from addiction. Um, I have no health issues. I'm married to a lovely gentleman. I'm an assistant in the church to help people with the same sort of problems that I faced for them to overcome, to help them um, in their salvation and to save souls. My Lord and my Father, we've been praying, we've been fasting, we've been sacrificing our will. We've been denying, my Lord, the pleasures for our flesh the entertainment with one focus, one goal, it is to have your spirit. But let this person, my Lord, have a clear understanding of what is to have your spirit. That is to belong to you. That is to become your property. And that is not losing. On the contrary, that is gaining. Because if we are all yours, if we belong to you, so you're gonna take care of us you're gonna watch over us you're gonna be my lord with us because we are yours so let them understand that they will need to serve you they will need to guide their lives according to your will and so those who understand it and thirst for you all the more like that blind man when they told him to be quiet when they told him to give up, when they said not to bother you, he shout out all the more louder. So this person who wants you, come upon them. Fill them with your spirit. Fill them with your presence. Fill them with your love. Let them receive this love. Let them receive this peace. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been seeking the spirit of God. You have been, you know, sacrificing, denying your will, yourself. Receive now the confirmation of God accepting you, God accepting your sacrifice, God accepting your fast. Even now on the tenth day, receive this strength to go until the end and to belong to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you and you that believe say Amen. Well, dear friends, as I said previously in our meditation, don't just rely on the short prayers we make here. Make your own prayers. Wake up and pray. You know, go the extra mile. Don't just rely on the short prayer. You have to be in constant prayer. Be in spirit. Be in spirit so you can receive the Spirit of God. Tomorrow we're going to come back with another meditation here at 8 a.m. And we are here during the fast every single day from Sunday to Sunday and bringing a message and a prayer together with you. God bless all of you. The Fast of Daniel from 11th to 31st December, concluding in the New Year's Eve night vigil.